I will pass you over to Louise Ryan. Hi, Louise. Hi, Nicole. Thanks a million. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. Just a few bits of housekeeping before I hand you over to our experts to do a very short presentation on electricity and appliances. Um, this session is going to be recorded and we will try to get through as many of your questions as possible, but anything that isn't, anything that we can't answer or don't have time for, um, we will send out an FAQ sheet as part of the um, e-zine for week three tomorrow. Um, so do keep an eye on that in your inbox. We'll also have a link to the webinar, which is being recorded, as I said. Um, if you want to pop your questions into the Q&A box, you can send them to all panelists and we will be answering them throughout. Um, I can see there's already some questions in there already, so that's great. Um, so keep popping them in there. And as I said, our experts will be happy to answer them. So I just want to welcome Elise Fenadori from our energy labeling team and Tom Halpin, who is our head of communications at SAI. So they're both very well um, versed in electricity and appliances, and they're going to be able to answer all your questions. Welcome Elise and Tom. Um, so, Elise, I'm going to hand over to you first. Um, so you're just going to yes. have like a really short presentation. It's just going to be five minutes. So you can start popping your questions in as they come to you and we'll be answering them straight after that then. Thank you, Louise. So, yeah, maybe the, the first comment I'd like to make on, on this slide is that the use of your home appliances can have a significant impact on your energy bill. And so it's nice to be mindful of this. As you can see on this slide, aside from home heating and water heating, the appliances in your home that would use the most electricity are your electric shower, your tumble dryer, and your oven. So I will leave it to Tom to give you more detailed information about the, ener the energy cost of the appliances you use. Thanks very much, Elise. So yeah, in your home, you're generally going to spend about 60% of your uh, energy is on heating about 20% on hot water and about the other 20% or so is on appliances. This chart, uh, you might have a chance to have a look at it later. Uh, this chart shows heating is that big ball on the, on the right because you're going to use heating for about four, five, six hours a day, particularly at the moment with the heating season in full stage. Uh, but the key here to bear in mind is not just how much energy you think an appliance uses when it's turned on, but how long it is turned on for. But as Elisa said there, the really big appliances are any ones that use heat. So if you just look there in the middle of the chart there, you've got the electric cooker, you have a tumble dryer, you have an immersion heater, and you plug in electric heaters. And then up in the top right is the one that we really want people to think long and hard about using, and that's the power electric shower. So anything that adds heat, see if you can look to reduce the amount of time you're using it on, see if you can use it uh, with less uh, a, a lower temperature if at all possible and then after that see if you can use it uh, with a fuller load so particularly things like tumble dryers or washing machines so it's always important to do it that way what this chart also shows is that some of the things that we think might be using a lot of energy really it's important to be mindful of them, but they're not going to use an awful lot of energy. So it's things like games consoles and lead based lighting. But what it also shows you is there's great things that you can do to save energy, like slow cookers we use a lot less than an oven. So even though they're on for six hours, and as we all know, if you've tried it, the food out of a slow cooker is really good. So I'll hand you back to Elise. Thanks, Tom. So yeah, just maybe, um... A, a few advices uh, when it comes to using appliances. The one I would give the first one uh, to all attendees is to be mindful of when and how you use your appliance, to turn them off if possible when they're not in use, and to carefully choose uh, the type of cycle or program, and especially the temperature setting that you're using uh, when you wash your clothes, when you preheat your oven, when you wash your dishes. And the second point I want to highlight now on the topic of home appliance use is the fact that between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m., the demand for electricity nationwide, nationwide is at its highest. So we're trying to use electricity outside of these peak times as much as possible. So as an add-on to these events uh, that SEI is running and the Reduce Your Use campaign, we also recently launched an awareness campaign on the energy label. So most of the home appliances that you buy in store or online have an energy label, which is a very useful tool um, as it details the amount of electricity the product uses and therefore how much it will cost you in the long run. 
we encourage everyone to check this label before buying a new client. And I will just give you a short overview of the information you can find on the label and how you can use it to save uh, some money on your energy bill. So here you can see two examples of energy labels. They're a bit different, but they present the same information. The label that you see on the left hand side is the old style energy label. And it's used for a number of appliances still, such as your tumble dryer, electric shower, your oven, just to name a few. And there is a new style energy label that you can see here or the, on the right hand side, the one that doesn't have the blue border, which is re like slowly replacing the old label and is already used for TVs, for dishwashers, washing machines and light bulbs, again, just to name a few. So they're a bit different, but they present the same type of information. The first thing I would uh, encourage people to look at is the colorful scale at the top of the label. So it allows you to quickly compare the energy efficiency of similar products. So taking the label on the right, which is a label for a fridge freezer, you can see it has a rating of a D out of an A to G scale. Let's imagine you're in a shop and you see this fridge and another fridge with similar size and characteristic that has a C rating instead of a D rating. You can know that the C rated appliance would use a bit less energy to function, so it will be a bit cheaper on your electricity bill. The first, uh, the second, sorry, piece of information I want to draw your attention to is just below the scale, and that's the energy consumption of the appliance. If we use the same example here, the label on the right for the fridge freezer, we can see that the appliance uses 400 kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour is a unit of energy per year to run. So at the moment, the price of one unit of energy is around 40 cents per a kilowatt hour. So just calculating the 400 by 0, 0.4 uh, cents, you can know that you would uh, use around 160 euro worth of electricity per year to make this appliance work. So this is also a good tool to kind of estimate how much uh, energy would your appliance uh, use. At the bottom of the label, again, there are additional information which are specific to each appliance type and that, that you can use as well. I won't talk too much more and I'll leave time for some questions you might have. Maybe my last comment, just to summarize a bit what, what we talked about this session, is first to be mindful of your use of the use of the appliance. And second, when you need to replace an appliance, once you have determined your budget and also the different specification that you need from the product, I would um, encourage you to compare the energy labels of the shortlist of products you have you might have selected to select the one that costs the less amount of money to run because this can bring you some significant savings in the long term. Thank you. Thanks, Elise. Just to just to clarify there on the label. So it's 400. So for anyone who might be buying a new appliance in the Black Friday sales, maybe or in January. Um, so if you multiply 400 by 0 0.04, that'll give you roughly how much it costs to run per year. Exactly. In the okay, case that's really useful. Label, yeah, in the case of this label, uh, it's written per year, so that's per annum. Some different appliances using different, so for example, for a washing machine, it would be by 100 cycle. For a okay. TV, it would be by a thousand hour of having your TV on. So it depends, but it's all, always written on the label uh, what the frequency or, or time is. And is it always the by 0.4 cent? Or that's what it costs at the moment. So that that's could what change. It costs but, at the moment. Yeah. It could change, okay. exactly. Okay, brilliant. I think that's really useful. So anyone just look at all the labels and work out roughly how much they cost and, and find out which is the best, I suppose, one that you can buy for your budget. Um, because there it, would there be a lot of differences, at least maybe between, let's say, like an A rated and a D rated? Would there be big savings to be made? There is, yes, indeed. It depends on the type of appliance. I'd say the biggest savings you can do is, for example, for a tumble dryer. Tumble dryers uh, use a lot of energy. So if you have an A triple plus rated tumble dryer compared to maybe a C or D rated tumble dryer, you could save up to 150 euro per year just with the use of it. This is, of course, very uh, extreme savings, but yeah, even for washing machines, you can save 20 to 30 euro per year if you use uh, the most energy efficient one for sure. OK, that's really good to know. Um, I just wanted to ask one other thing you mentioned as well um, is the five to seven. So between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. is the most 
the busiest time or the most, what, what would you call it, the, the highest time for electricity usage in Ireland. Um, is it more expensive to use your washing machine, to use your cooker between 5 and 7 p.m.? Well, perhaps I'll take that one. Yeah, uh, sure. Thanks, so, John. yeah. So the, the the issue with peak time, and I know uh, many of your many of the people online will have heard ads from ESB networks as well, is that at peak time we're going to ne we need to use all of the power generation capacity we have. So we use all of the plentiful wind that we have. We use our gas generation capacity, and sometimes we have to bring on uh, dirtier capacity like coal. Uh, and when we do that, it's certainly more expensive for the electricity generation system. And it's also more uh, environmentally harmful. So what happens is if we can get people to avoid using the, uh, their, their appliances uh, outside of those or move their use to outside of those hours, then we don't have to tap into that expensive capacity. Now, is it more expensive for an individual? Some people might have already adapted uh, because of the uh, availability of smart meters, may have adapted to using smart tariffs and smart tariffs, sometimes they incentivize use outside of peak hours and then penalize work uh, use in those hours. And so it's, it actually forces you to change your habits. But I think for most people, it's just a simple thing of, let's say you, you know you wanna have a shower or you wanna wash the dishes in around six or seven o'clock, well, just turn on the immersion at half four or have it set to a timer to come on at half four and go off at five. Your cylinder will stay plenty hot provided it's well insulated. And that, that means you've used the, you've got the energy use, but it's outside the peak hours and then it's stored as heat. And the same thing, look, don't come in straight after work and put the washing machine or the clothes dryer yeah. on, just wait till half seven, eight o'clock. And it actually will help us all. And this is where we talk, you might hear this phrase like peak shaving. And this is what people are, businesses have been asked to do as well, is try and move the, the load away from that peak. There is a few more peaks during the day, but that's a really big one, five to seven. Okay, five to seven. And then I suppose it's just for people to, to maybe have a look at their, their bills as well and, and get onto their energy supplier and find out like what, if they're maybe on a night rate or if they have a smart meter, just mm -hmm. so they can get to know like what the best time for them is and the cheapest time yeah. for them is as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a, a real problem at the moment that electricity prices have gone so high, but that does mean that the savings, we would always have uh, suggested these savings to people in terms of how you use your electricity or how you use your heating, but those savings are much bigger now because the price of electricity is higher. And so it's really worth what Elisa said there about looking at the labels before you buy, really save money. And an appliance is going to be in your kitchen for maybe eight, 10 years. So it's going to keep on saving. Okay, brilliant. Right, we're going to go to the questions now. Um, I just had one question there just to me, um, just saying I still have not received a link to the recording from last year's event, last week's event. So that went out last Wednesday um, to everyone who's registered for the um, home energy plan. Um, if you didn't receive it, it may have gone into your junk mail. Um, just have a check, but it did go out last Wednesday and we can include another link to it tomorrow in tomorrow's one as well. Um, so the first question for, I think I might put this to you, Tom. Um, what temperature should central central thermostat be set to, and how can I keep my house warm during the day without turning on gas central heating? As I worry about the expense of having heating on in the daytime, but don't want to get hypothermia, as I'm a senior, very um, common issue this winter, yes. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, really, really common, and I'm glad that we have a question like that because uh, as our campaign and the, the government's campaign is saying, we want everyone to keep warm and well mm. this Christmas or this winter rather. And it's really important that when we talk about energy savings, at the moment, we're trying to advocate that people don't go without, they just be sensible. Uh, a good temperature, if a person is old or infirmed or, you know, tends to be less mobile, we'd be advocating certainly, you know, 21, 22, maybe even 23 degrees. For more, most homeowners, we'd be advocating 19 degrees is comfortable. But if you're sedentary, then you need to be keeping warmer. Uh, how you keep it, 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 it's difficult to say how to keep the house warm without turning on the gas central heating. But the other way to do it is to try and use the gas central heating in smaller spaces. So if uh, the correspondent or the, the person who asked the question has a way of, say, turning off the heating in the bedroom during the day and turning it off in maybe 
one of the other rooms in the house during the day and then turning them back on at night. Uh, so being more selective and some control systems allow you to do that automatically, but it may be just a case of going around and turning down, turning off or turning down the rads. That's the best way. But certainly it's really important that people do stay warm and, and well. There are government supports that are available and people should contact the uh, Money Advice and Budgeting Service, which are working in close cons consultation with the, the, our own par parent department to help people who may be struggling to eat their homes comfortably. Will that make a big difference, Tom? So if you just have one room heated, will that really cut down on your, your costs, your bills? It, it, if one room for a couple of hours mightn't have a massive effect with a few rooms. And so, if you're in a home, I don't know where this person is, but to say you're in a three or four bed semi or something like that, it may not be the case. But if there's a few bedrooms that are unused and a bathroom that you don't use during the day, maybe there's a downstairs bathroom that you do use, so turn it off in the upstairs bathroom. And closing those doors will all help because you are heating larger volume of air in your in your home. Uh, so it, it really depends on the setup of the house. The other thing, uh, it depends as well on what the person's particular income is. But if the house that they're in is not particularly well insulated, there are very significant grants available at the moment for cavity wall insulation and attic insulation. And that, of course, will mean that when the heating goes off at whatever time, the house will stay warmer for longer. Yeah, so we will include links to that as well, just for people to have a look at and just maybe... Thanks, Louise. Just say if it's a, a semi bed, se a three bed <laughs> semi detached house, yeah. um, attic insulation, you're probably going to get a grant of about, is it 1200? Yeah. 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 Yeah, which is very significant. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll include links to those as well for that um, asker. Um, does the Amazon Alexa use a lot of electricity? And what about Wi Fi plugs and bulbs? Yeah, all of these, uh, well, I, I, I think if someone's talking about the, the just relatively modest size Alexa dots, you know, the, the one yeah. that's somewhere between a tennis ball and a football in size. Uh, they don't use a lot of power. You know, you're talking somewhere around the, maybe the same power as a TV or maybe the same power as a laptop because the speakers are relatively modest. It's just the way they're uh, designed gives you a, quite, quite a powerful experience. That doesn't mean, you know, necessarily that uh, you should leave them on when you're out of the room. But like most appliances as well, uh, most modern appliances, they have really low standby power. So if you're going away for a few days, yes, or if you're going to be out away for the weekend, yes, unplug them, switch them off, and that also has safety features. But you won't save a lot of money by unplugging or turning those sort of appliances off standby. Uh, and as regards uh, plugs and bulbs, if you're using LED lighting, so LED lighting is light emitting diode uh, lighting, the, the ones with the small little pin pin dots of light in them, they use very, very low power. So I'm certainly of an age that I can remember incandescent bulbs. So where you use the 60 watt incandescent bulb, you then change that over to CFL, which some people might still have in their houses, compact fluorescent lamps. You'd use probably a 12 watt equivalent. So it's, you know, your, your energy use is reduced by 80%. Now you use a lead that might be seven watts for that. So it's about half again. So they're super low power. Uh, absolutely doesn't make sense to have a light on in the room just because they're low energy. So if you're not in the room, that is. So do maintain the practice of turning off the lights when you leave a room. But again, with lighting, and it's on the chart that we showed uh, earlier, LED lighting is really only going to be a, a small number of pence per day uh, for the average home if you use LED lighting throughout. And the last one was the Wi-Fi plugs. Uh, again, very, very low power. And but switch you know, them off as well, I suppose, if you're not well, using them. Switch yeah. them off if you're not using them. But that's the thing. Yeah. That, uh, we're, we're not suggesting that people should lose out on the use of what gives them good Wi-Fi coverage in the okay. home. But <laughs> it just if they're not in use. But then I think we tend to need, well, we tend to believe we need our Wi-Fi on 24 hours a day. That's true. Um, it might just before we go to the next question, I was going to ask you, Tom, just about um, energy monitoring devices. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a lot of people use them and yeah. find them really useful. Are they expensive? Do you know, like, can you just tell people a little bit about yeah. them? Yeah, so an energy monitoring device, there's a couple of versions of them, uh, some that are clip-on that allow you basically, well, sorry, I'll start with the plug-in devices, which are easier to understand. So if you imagine 
the sort of device that you might get that's a timer plug for a, a lamp where you want a lamp to come on and off. These energy monitor devices are like that. So what you do is you plug the energy monitor into the socket and you plug the appliance into it. So what you're then able to see is when it's in use, how much power is it using. Now, it's probably less informative the amount it's using as much as to compare different devices. So for the person who just asked about the Alexa dot and the their lights, they would plug in the light and they'd see it uses X amount of energy. And then they plug in the Alexa while it's on, it uses either twice that amount of energy or half the amount of energy. So they get a sense of it. Now where it's really useful is to see those larger devices, you know, the toaster, the kettle, you can't do it really with the cooker, but you could do it with a microwave and see and the washing machine and the dryers. So you can see those appliances and see how much they're using while they're on. And some of them will be kind of scary because it'll go up off the dial. The kettle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the kettle is a great one, uh, you know, where it, we, we love the convenience of the kettle boiling in three minutes, but that's because it's chugging an awful lot of heat in at a very fast, fast pace. The other type of ones available are clip-on ones that you can clip on around the electric behaviors at various points and see how much energy has been used in your home. And as you turn an off, on and off device, you can see the, the amount going up and down. The, the chart that we showed earlier is really a sort of a representation of that. So unless you really need the detail, it's probably sufficient for you just to have a sense of, well, you know, dishwasher won't use as much as a dryer, but a dishwasher will use more than, say, a slow cooker. And then you decide, well, how long is it going to be on? So it's uh, okay. okay. Yeah, I was just, just curious. Yeah. Um, so Elise, I just have a question here for you. If you lost yes. your energy labels, can you check the usage of your appliances online somewhere or see the labels online? Yeah, definitely. So if uh, you search the model name of your appliance into any search engine, Google or anything else, you will find the label um, that's attached to this appliance and you'll be able to know how much uh, energy it uses. OK, that's really useful. Yeah. And the model number will be on like that sticker on any of the appliances. It's like usually inside the door of a tumble dryer or it's underneath the kettle or something like that. But yeah, okay. so that's really useful. And then another one about energy labels. So has the energy label changed for fridge freezers and are integrated fridge freezers less efficient? Um, will be changing shortly and want to know which is the best energy rating. They seem to be rating from E to G. Yeah, that's a that's a very common question we get. There has been a rescaling of so the scale, the colorful scale that I showed you previously for uh, different appliances, including fridge freezers. This doesn't mean that the fridge freezer uh, energy efficiency becomes uh, less good. It just means that the scale uh, has changed. So um, a lot of fridge freezers at the moment are between yeah, uh, D, E, F or G uh, in their energy use. The, the way it's been done this way is also to encourage manufacturers to, to innovate and make more energy efficient appliances, which will populate the, the top layers of the scale. Um, there is still between, for example, a G rated uh, fridge freezer and an E rated fridge freezer, there is still quite a significant energy uh, difference so it will cost you different um amount of money to run okay or the so other. it's still worth getting the more it's going for the e rather than the g <laughs> it is yeah it's true that okay. when when we look at the scale it's very kind of the e is still at the bottom of the scale but still there is a, an energy saving uh, on that and yeah that's that's about it yeah perfect I think if you if you were to think of it if people think of it it sounds poor because, as Elise says, an E or an F are down towards the bottom of the scale. But if you think of the scale being roughly split into equal amounts of energy use for, so your yeah. A rated will use roughly one seventh of a G rated. But that does mean then that you'll save about a seventh of the energy in the F range. You'll save another seventh as you go into the E range. And a seventh of any 13, 14%, whatever it is in the maths terms. So Very true. It, it's, Very true. It's, it's worth moving it up. And actually, as we buy more appliances, we, as Elise says, we drive the manufacturers to create more good appliances. And that's hugely important. Brilliant. Thank you both. Um, I have a smart meter and I just signed up for my ESB Networks online account over the weekend. When I sign in, I'm not seeing detailed consumption data hourly or even daily. I only see occasional meter readings. Is there anything I can do to get the detailed information? 
does I know we're not, we may I, not be I able to answer that, that off -hand. Yeah, well, no, I know that there has, like, I know actually ESB Networks only last week started that online account mm. for people to allow them sign up. And I know it was uh, it was inundated uh, with uh, requests. I don't know what their promise is in terms of long term, what they're going to give. I know that people who got smart meters at the start were very disappointed that it seemed to be that it was only offering a service of you, your meter could be remotely read. We'll see more services added and perhaps even your energy supplier, as the sync from networks who administer, perhaps your energy supplier might be able to now support that. So it's, it's really a question. It's still at the beginning, to, perhaps. Yeah, but it's really a question yeah. to direct to your electricity supplier or ESB networks. Perfect. Thanks, Tom. How do I calculate the kilowatts per hour of an appliance without a label? That's actually a, a very good question. I'm, I'm not entirely sure I can I can answer. It depends really much on the label. You can monitor your energy use while you use the appliance. As Tom was saying, there are some, some devices you can use to monitor the energy use. I think that would be one of the easiest way to see how much an appliance would uh, would consume while being in use. Um, so yeah, I don't know, Tom, if you have anything else. Yeah, to add it, to it, it, without the label itself, it may not be possible. Having said that, uh, if you actually, if you have the uh, handbook for the device, or if you're a sad person like me who keeps the handbooks for all their appliances, you can look in the back and it'll tend to say, you know, the kettle, it's a 900 watt kettle or an 1100 watt kettle or whatever it is. And, the, and it'll show you the watts consumed uh, on the various cycles as well of be it a dishwasher or a washing machine or a, a dryer. So you can do that. Again, I imagine someone, searching for the model number as well online. Yeah, searching for the yeah. model number will by yeah. and large give it to you, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, and sometimes it might just even be written in or around. You might be surprised at what's written on the side, you know, or in, yeah. like inside an oven, there's typically a rating plate that shows you what its max power consumption is, stuff like that. Super. Um, I bought a new TV recently and all options in the shop were G rating, which seemed very low. Is there any better options available, please? So yeah, I think it's it's a very similar to the previous questions with uh, fridge freezers, and it's true that at the moment most of the options for TVs are either an F or or a G. It doesn't mean that the TV consumes a lot of electricity. Yeah. If you if you compare, for example, a G-rated TV and an A-rated tumble dryer or an A-rated washing machine, the the TV will consume way less energy. It's just mm -hmm. comparison between different TVs. So. Uh, at the moment in shops, it, it's hard to find other options, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that your TV would consume a, a lot of energy. I had a few, um, few numbers for, for example, 55 inch TV that would be a, a G rated would consume uh, around 110 kilowatts per hour for a thousand hour of use. So that's, that would be around 40, 40 euro. Um, per year okay. to run your TV. Uh, I mean, for four to years per year. Per year. Yeah. Okay. So it's, okay, that's it's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Way, I, way I think it's really good. important to reassure people uh, mm -hmm. because people can feel like you know what's going on here, which labels changing in different scales. But what's really important with what happened with the changing of the labels is, it actually was a demonstration of what had been achieved with the past labels that the the past labels had meant we had moved enough, we'd moved the suppliers far enough along that we we're basically saying, if you're providing these really poor grades, we're not accepting them anymore. So it chopped off the label at that point and then just redivided the scale. So imagine it's like taking the top performers in a class, moving and just taking the top performers and then rescaling them, you know, so as everyone uh, knows then where they have to get to. But it, it, the, the objective is always to get a best outcome for homeowners who are buying Firstly, the label Perfect. is mandatory, and secondly, manufacturers are just going to have to rise to the challenge of better appliances. Um, what about fan ovens? Do you need to wait for it before you switch them off at the wall? That's it. I think with newer fan ovens, you do have to wait for them to cool down. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's generally a good idea if the uh, fan is still operating just from a safety standpoint, it, it is a better idea to, to let them uh, cool down. As it happens, it, that also ties in with a thing that if you are using an oven, it's not a bad idea to do because the modern fan ovens are so well sealed in the first instance, not a bad idea to turn it off maybe five, 10 minutes before you finish using it because actually the heat will stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Do wait until the fan has stopped before switching it off at the, uh, 
at the wall. Yeah, it, I think it takes even up to a half an hour now with with the newer models. So yeah, it's it's a good oh. idea to definitely leave them cool down. Yeah, I would maybe add just that the fan function of the oven is not what's going to consume a lot of electricity. It's really the heating part of it that will use the most electricity. So yeah, keeping the, the oven cooling down for, for a few minutes or even a half an hour won't change much. Brilliant, Elise. Thank you. Um, I turned down my thermostat as is recommended, but the radiators didn't heat up as a result. Why would this be? Well, what's happening? If they, you're, I presume the person's talking about a, a wall stat, say out in the hall, what's mm. happening there is, and say it's set to 20 degrees, when that part of the wall, literally that part of the wall reaches 20 degrees, then the heating throughout the house is turned off. And it's it's a sort of a, it's a weakness. But if the they're way. not heating up at all? Oh, well, if they're not heating up at all, then the stat is yeah. turned down below what the outside temperature is. That's the only oh, reason that could be. Okay. Now, that, you know, and it, it, it would be very unusual on a day like today because I think it might be six or seven degrees out there. Yeah. But if you have a warm day and, you know, uh, you could have it where the upstairs can be warm because it's sunny outside and it might be that you've set the thermostat to 18 degrees and it happens to be 18 degrees over on that part of the wall because it's getting sunlight. But by and large, that shouldn't happen when there's a, a big difference. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. Um, if we've just, I know we're just gone over the half hour mark, but we just have a couple more questions to get through. Loads of great questions coming in. Um, so we'll just try and get through a few more for you. Um, there's a question there about any grants for windows. There isn't individual grants for windows. There is as part of the one stop shop and we can include links as well for that. Um, as a general rule, what uses less energy in electric shower? used for five minutes, three times a day, or a shower with, with water heated by gas? Now, there's a question for you. <laughs> well, if you're going to, if, if the shower is going to be used three times a day, uh, then that's close, that's probably a, a good full cylinder of, of water. If the heating is on, and particularly if your heating is on, then use the cylinder and use a gravity fed, uh, your gravity fed shower. Uh, the bottom line, at least just mentioned it there as well with the oven is it's it, the, the heating is what takes the, uh, uses the most energy and an electric shower is particularly intensive because it's to heat the water from cold in a very short space of time, literally a short physical space as well. So it has to work really, really hard. So it tends to use, I, I think, between two and three, it can use between two and three kilowatts while it's on, which is very intensive. Even using an immersion heater uh, will is probably a bit more efficient than using uh, an electric shower. So try and use your cylinder where you can. We even recommend that during the summer, which is, I know, unfortunately, a long way away for the moment, but during the summer, if you can use your heating system to heat water, it's more efficient. OK, thanks, Tom. Are smart plugs energy efficient? Well, they are. It, well, it, they are insofar as, well, for two reasons. One, they use very little power in and of themselves. They just use a small little amount of trickle power. But they're super efficient because you're using them to control the amount of energy you're using in the lamp. So you can use them to turn lamps on when you need them. So say a day like today, rather than leaving the lamp on because you might want it on when you come home, you can use a smart plug to have it turn on at 4.30 just when it gets dark. So actually, they are an energy efficiency device in and of themselves. Yeah, we have ones that will turn off when you're when you leave the house mm -hmm. or you know they'll, they'll turn back on when you come back in. So yeah, very useful. Yeah, they are great. Um, uh, question, silly question they're saying, but it, no silly question. There's no silly question. Um, how do you know if you actually have a smart meter? I think that's actually a really good one. <laughs> there's a there's a good chance unless you've uh, unless you've just moved into the house, say in the last two or three years, you will more you will know that someone came to fit a smart meter. But if you look at your smart me if you have access to your meter box on your house uh, and you open that the old style meter is the old black device with the gray dial and the, the slow moving wheel yeah. the newer device is sort of cream color like an old desktop computer sort of color and it has electronic digits on it it's much smaller and neater as well but you will know if you're, if you, as I say, if you're living there because someone had to come and fit it and had to have permission to, and switch off your power for 45 minutes while you were there. Yeah, it. or I just moved into our house and we called our energy supplier and they told us we had a smart meter. There's so another great way to find out. That's another one. Yeah, so I was in a similar situation. We weren't yeah. sure. So yeah, we have one. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, 
yeah, if you open the box as well, you'll know. Um, oh, this is a really good question because you hear so many people talking about them now. Is a boiling water tap more energy efficient than using a kettle? Now, you may not know this, but. It's it's a very difficult, well, I'd, I'd like to start on the other side, which is to say that we are generally very inefficient in the way we use kettles. Kettles yes. are a great way to boil water because we even advise people that if you need a pot of boiling water for cooking rice or potatoes or carrots or whatever, boil it in the kettle first because it is efficient that way, albeit that it uses a lot of energy. But then it it, why we're inefficient is we typically boil a kettle full of water for a cup of tea we're going to have in two and a half hours, something like that. So it really depends on how you use your kettle. Again, the, the benefit with the boiling tap is it's only going to give you as much water as you need. So it'll literally give you the full cup, whereas even with a kettle, you need maybe mm. a little bit more. But after that, it sort of depends on the power intensity of it. And, and they will have different ratings. They'll have different power consumption. So probably uh, how much you use it as well. Yeah, it's it's it's. Yeah, I know that's unhel maybe unhelpful to, to the listeners, but it's a little bit of horses for courses. Yeah, I suppose if you're someone who's constantly at the kettle on the boil, it probably would work out. Yeah, you know, we had one yes. in our office and it, it was great that we weren't all boiling the kettle. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so I hope that's helpful. Um, someone else mm -hmm. is just asking if there are only G rated TVs available, how did they work out the rating? That's a, that's, a good point, I suppose. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's a good question. Compare them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so the different rating um, depend on the energy consumption. So a, a G rating, for example, would be for TVs that I'll just say a number as an example. This is not necessarily the, the right number, but G rating would be TVs that consume more than 100 kilowatt hour for 1000 hour of use. Then the F rating would be between 75 to 100, uh, E rating between 50 to 75, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how they would put different TVs in different uh in the scale itself. I don't know if that answers the question. No, that's that's really helpful, Elise. Thank you. Um, final question, I think, unless anyone else has any they want to sneak in for Tom and Elise. Um, so rewashing machine cycles, and this is a, this is a very common uh, question as well. Question, Could an yeah. eco wash 40 degrees that takes 2.5 hours really be more efficient than a one hour wash at 40 degrees? The eco part confuses me. Yeah, it actually is. Uh, the eco part here is it's it's doubly eco. By eco, what they're saying, you know, what the manufacturers are saying is that it'll use less water because water is an extra, extremely uh, precious resource that we tend to abuse as well. But it uses a lot less water, and because it uses a lot less water, that means it uses a lot less heat to heat that water. It can be sometimes a third of the water is used in the full cycle. Now, because it uses less water, it therefore relies a lot more on you know, just gently soaking the clothes and gently tumbling them. So it's far less vigorous. It's just mm. using, allowing time and water and the detergent do its job. Whereas when you go for the, you know, 50 minute cycle, you're using really aggressive temperatures, really aggressive amounts of water and really aggressive tumbling action. So the bottom line is it may seem like it's ridiculous because it's over a longer period. But that's what I said earlier with the chart, something that uses a lot of energy uh, or something that, sorry, something that takes a long time could still use a lot of, lot less energy because it's using less overall in, in the process. So, yeah. And actually, it's worth noting as well, even if you put it on the eco wash, if your machine allows you, you can drop the temperature to 30 degrees. The time won't extend much more and you'll still get a really powerful wash and you'll have cut your energy use even further. Brilliant. That's really, really useful. And um, just in terms of tumble dryers as well, um, is there an efficient way to use them? Because I know a lot of people have to use them, maybe if they have babies, if they have, mm. you know, maybe someone ill in the house. Um, is, is there an efficient way to use them? Is, is there eco cycles? I well, I, I, no. was, I, I was going to use the smart, the efficient way to use them is not to use them if you can. I know, but some people do have to. Right. Yeah. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. Some people's circumstances in the, the homes they occupy are the, the, you know, the family requirements. It's basically use them on as low a temperatures and as low a spin as possible. Uh, where possible, then you know, then you might air the clothes in a room, but make sure the room is ventilated afterwards, well ventilated, because you don't want condensation issues. But unfortunately, 
it, it, you know, it's a little bit like saying, is there an efficient way to use a power shower? It's, it's, it's really just, yeah. don't use it as much as possible. Only, That's the only yeah. way, only where it's essential. But, and actually, yeah. just a follow on question to that, are dehumidifiers efficient to cut down in tumble jars? I know dehumidifiers are extremely expensive to run. Yeah, they are yeah. very expensive to yeah. run. Look, you can ventilate a room no more than we would advise. If you have a, a, mm. a shower in your bathroom and you, you have to do the shower, open the window, let the ventilator for five minutes and then close it up. Mm -hmm. It's done most of the job and provided you have a bit of background heating in the home, you're not going to have real problems with condensation. There is actually, as a final a final note, I've seen people using those um, fan assisted clothes horses, which are supposed to be very energy efficient mm -hmm. compared to a tumble dryer. So that might be yeah, something that, that be. people could look into um, yeah. and they do dry quite quickly as well. Yeah, um, they would right. be quicker. Yeah, um, Elise or Tom, do you have any final comments for anyone or any any last things you want to say before we finish this up? I think it's 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 really good for people to remember that what uses heat is likely to you be a really high energy consumer. Yeah. And really just become more thoughtful. I think anyone, and it's great, we're delighted to be helping all these people who've signed up for the energy home energy plan. They are already beginning to be more thoughtful about their energy use. And that's what it is. You know, we, a lot of it is common sense. But what we need people to do is gently apply that common sense more and more in their daily lives. And, you know, get into good habits and good habits stick with you for, you know, after a few a couple of weeks. Just get into those good habits and, and maybe be a bit more inquisitive. Think, you know. Yeah. I think I think everyone's shown more. that today. All oh, the questions absolutely. have been really interesting and really Brilliant. insightful. Um, yeah, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. I think, as I said, the questions have been really interesting and have really enjoyed this. Um, Elise and Tom, thank you so much for giving your time. Um, I think we've actually answered all the questions, but I will circulate this as an FAQ sheet tomorrow as well as a recording. I had a query there from someone who hasn't received the email and I will get on to you separately and I'll email you straight after this with the link to last week's and um, email as well. So, um, as I said, you'll be getting the email for um, the final week tomorrow. So um, the final week is transport. We'll be back here next Tuesday at 12 with our colleague Shane, who will be talking about ways to cut down your energy use um, when trying to get from A to B. Um, thank you so much, Tom. And thank you so much, Elise. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, folks. Bye. 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 Have a lovely day. Thanks, thank you.